Every time you watch a video on YouTube, listen to music on Spotify, or open a file with VLC, you're using FFmpeg. You've probably never heard of it, yet it's everywhere. It's the invisible engine that powers practically everything related to audio and video in the digital world. This software isn't an app, it's not a service, it's not a brand you know. It's something much more important. It's infrastructure. It's what makes the digital era we live in possible. And today, we're telling you its incredible story. The story of FFmpeg begins in December 2000, when Fabrice Bellard, a French programmer already famous for other innovative projects, decided to create a library to handle audio and video formats. The name FFmpeg comes from Fast Forward MPEG, reflecting the initial goal of creating a fast and efficient MPEG decoder. Bellard was already known in the computing community for creating QMU and for his records in calculating digits of pi. With this project, he wanted to solve a concrete but enormous problem, the fragmentation of multimedia formats and the lack of unified tools to handle them. Imagine the multimedia landscape of 2000. Every company had its proprietary format. Microsoft had WMV and WMA, Apple had QuickTime, Real Networks dominated streaming with Real Video, and every hardware manufacturer had their own specifications. It was total chaos. If you wanted to play a video, you had to hope you had the right player, often paying expensive licenses. Bellard decided to do something revolutionary for the time, create a completely open source library that could handle all these formats. But it wasn't just about copying what already existed. He had to build everything from scratch, studying technical specifications, reverse engineering proprietary formats, and above all, creating an architecture that was modular and extensible. From the beginning, Bellard designed the project with a precise philosophy. Separation of responsibilities. Instead of creating a monolith, he divided it into distinct components. Leba format would be responsible for managing containers, those formats like AVI, MP4, MKV that contain audio and video streams within them. Think of them as boxes that can contain different types of content. Lib of Codec would handle the actual codecs, the algorithms that compress and decompress audio and video. This was the most complex part, because each codec has its own mathematical specifications and algorithms. Libevatil collected all common utilities, memory management, mathematical functions, shared data structures. The early years were incredibly difficult. Bellard literally had to decode how proprietary formats worked. There was no public documentation for many codecs. He had to analyze binary files, study the behavior of existing decoders, and often proceed by trial and error. The biggest challenge was maintaining compatibility. A decoder can't just work more or less. It must produce exactly the same output as the reference decoder, pixel by pixel, sample by sample. Otherwise, files won't open or will look sound bad. What made this library truly special was its modular architecture. Other projects of the era were monolithic. You either took the whole package or nothing. The framework instead allowed you to use only the pieces you needed. Did you only want to decode MP3? Just linking Libav codec was enough. Did you want to handle MKV containers? Libav format was sufficient. This modularity wasn't just an elegant technical choice. It was strategic. It allowed other projects to integrate the software easily without having to carry around useless code. The design philosophy is based on four fundamental pillars. Modularity, as we mentioned, performance through continuous optimization for speed and efficiency, compatibility with support for hundreds of different formats, and extensibility thanks to an open architecture for new codecs and formats. But there's also a deep ethical value. The project has always avoided including code that violated active patents, has maintained strong transparency in development, and has resisted commercial temptations. It's a framework that puts user freedom and software portability first. In 2004, Michael Niedermeyer took over leadership when Bellard focused on other work. Under Niedermeyer's guidance, the project began to expand rapidly. Numerous audio and video codecs were added, Support for increasingly diverse containers was developed, code quality improved significantly, and an active and dedicated developer community was born. During this period, the library began to be adopted by commercial and open source projects, demonstrating its versatility and reliability. 
The years from 2007 to 2010 marked the explosion of popularity. Several factors contributed to this success. With the advent of YouTube in 2005 and the explosive growth of online video, this infrastructure became essential for automatic conversion of user-uploaded videos, optimization for different resolutions and bit rates, and support for emerging new formats. Major companies began integrating the framework into their products. VLC Media Player used its libraries, numerous video editing software were based on it, and nascent streaming services adopted the solution for transcoding. A little-known detail is that VLC manages to include all codecs, even those covered by patents, thanks to strategic use of licenses and distribution primarily in Europe, where the legal situation on software patents is less restrictive compared to the United States. Additionally, VLC doesn't dynamically link to external codecs but includes them statically, an important technical and legal choice. Also in those years, some open codecs like Theora, derived from VP3, found fertile ground precisely thanks to the compatibility and support. This link between free codecs and the project's modular structure played a crucial role in promoting open media. 2011 marked a dramatic moment in the history with the birth of Labav, a fork of the original project. The division arose from disagreements about development methods, differences of opinion on code architecture, and issues of leadership and decision-making processes. This led to the creation of two parallel projects with similar objectives, generating confusion in the user community and duplication of development efforts. This period, initially seen as negative, would actually lead to innovations in both projects, with the original continuing to maintain leadership in commercial adoption. A significant event was also the removal of LibFAC, an AAC encoder that wasn't completely free due to license-related issues. The team chose to replace it with completely open-source solutions, clearly affirming its ethical position on free software. After years of parallel development, the community began to gradually come back together. The project, under the guidance of developers like Carl Eugen Hoyos and other key contributors, continued to evolve. During this period, support for modern codecs like H.264 and H.65 HEVC was developed, increasingly sophisticated encoding algorithms were implemented, and optimizations for modern hardware and GPU acceleration were introduced. The software faced new challenges such as live streaming and real-time protocols, support for HDR formats and advanced color spaces, and integration with machine learning technologies. Throughout all this, it maintained a deeply open source approach, refusing to include proprietary technologies when this implied compromises on user freedom. Every line of code is documented, traceable, and built on principles of transparency and community collaboration. The advent of streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus brought this infrastructure to the center of the entertainment industry. In this era, adaptive bitrate streaming emerged where the framework handles the creation of multiple quality versions of content. Support for modern codecs like AV1 and VP9 was also developed, along with other efficient compression technologies, while cloud processing was optimized for distributed environments. This software is now at the foundation of a billion-dollar industry. All major streaming services use it, millions of hours of content are processed daily, and the ecosystem supports thousands of jobs worldwide. To understand the breadth of impact, just look at the projects that integrate it. OBS Studio for streaming and recording, Handbrake for video conversion, VLC which uses its libraries for decoding and encoding, Blender for video rendering, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Netflix, Zoom, Jitsi, OpenCV, and hundreds of other software including players, editing tools, cloud platforms, and embedded systems. This infrastructure is everywhere, often without us realizing it. The adoption numbers are impressive. It's used by over 95% of open source multimedia software, integrated into thousands of commercial applications and processes billions of hours of content every day. From a development perspective, the project can boast over 1,000 contributors over the years, hundreds of commits per month, support for over 400 file formats, and more than 200 supported codecs. The ecosystem is vast, Bindings are available for all major programming languages. It's used by tech giants like Google, 
Facebook and Netflix and has become a fundamental component of modern internet infrastructure. Current technical challenges include implementing next-generation codecs like AV1 and VVC, integrating artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies for upscaling and enhancement algorithms, supporting virtual and augmented reality 360-degree formats, and optimizing energy efficiency for mobile devices. From a legal and governance perspective, the project must face the complex management of codec patents, compliance with increasingly stringent international regulations, and ensuring the long-term sustainability of the open source initiative. FFmpeg represents one of the greatest successes of open source, with an impact that extends far beyond the technological world. From a technological standpoint, it has democratized access to multimedia technologies, standardized many industry practices, and made possible the digital video era we know today. The social impact is equally significant. This framework has allowed independent creators to access professional tools that would otherwise have been out of their reach, has supported innovation in startups and small companies by providing them with the necessary technological foundations, and has significantly contributed to the growth of the global digital economy. The story of FFmpeg is the story of the evolution of digital multimedia over the past 25 years. From a small personal project by Fabrice Ballard, it has become a fundamental infrastructure of the modern internet. Every time we watch a video on YouTube, Netflix, or TikTok, every time we make a video call or edit a video on our phone, we're using technologies based on this software. It's a perfect example of how open source can create value for billions of people worldwide. The future looks bright with new technologies like artificial intelligence and virtual reality opening new frontiers to explore. One thing is certain, this infrastructure will continue to be at the center of multimedia innovation for many years to come.